30 years ago today, Empretec was rolled out in Argentina. Since then, over the, the, the 30 years, Empretec has trained close to half a million entrepreneurs, most of whom have been women, but also with some men. 600,000, 600, 600 uh, national training courses, a large number of national experts who have been able to see over 30 years what the world is only starting to see today. That there is no sustainable model of empowering entrepreneurship which leaves behind women entrepreneurs. We join you today to celebrate the achievements of this exercise. Ten years ago in Accra, when the World Investment Forum was being inaugurated, the Empretec Awards were also inaugurated. And I want to thank again my friend, the then Minister of Trade of Ghana and the current Minister of Trade of Ghana, Kier Matin, for your leadership in both launching Empretec <laughs> and these awards. Four short years ago, we were in this hall celebrating the genius of women entrepreneurs, many who have defeated adversary, many who have confronted challenges that will make many men hesitate. But they have triumphed, they have been role models, and they have kept our promise that given an opportunity, even inadequate compared to what men have as entrepreneurs, they can succeed, create value in their societies, retain and grow dignity, and be role models for the next generation. I want to express my appreciation for my Empretec team, led by Fiorina and Tatiana Krivolova, both ladies present here tonight, for continuing this strong tradition and keeping us <laughs> true to our mission in the 40 countries where we have Empretec and in the 29 countries in the pipeline which have applied for the launch of Empretec in the coming period. I want in advance, while celebrating the, the success of the women entrepreneurs who are represented by the prizes tonight, to also say that it takes more than building entrepreneurship to make women succeed. At a time of reversals in the global trade possibilities, the most vulnerable are the first casualties. The shortening of global value chains, the challenges associated with the threats against multilateralism make those in small business most vulnerable. And therefore, beyond what we can do with unlocking the potential of women entrepreneurs, we have to be collective in our commitment to reforming globalization, but protecting globalization from the forces of narrow nationalism. Similarly, reforming the multilateral trading system, but appreciating that a rules-based, predictable trading system is good for the most vulnerable and is critical for achieving the Agenda 2030 that we all aspire to. Thank you very much for coming in many numbers. Thank you very much, particularly the ladies I see in colorful dresses, and please enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary General. So before we start, before we get to meet uh, all the women entrepreneurs, we are thrilled to have uh, here tonight uh, with us Stacy King. Uh, she has an amazing voice. She will be able to, to hear us. She started uh, her career as a banker. Uh, she has been working also in development projects in Africa. And she has a wonderful talent. She has been in the sem semi-final of The Voice. Uh, she, ha she starred also the musical uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. And she's about to re release an album. So please welcome to Stacy King. <laughs> I don't have any musicians. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight? Are you ready to sing in French with me? Yes. No. Yes. Yes, let's try. Mm -hmm. 
des yeux qui font baisser les miens Un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche Voilà le portrait sans retouche De l'homme auquel j'appartiens Are you ready? Quand il me prend dans ses bras Qu'il me parle tout bas Je vois la vie yeah. Il me dit des mots d'amour Des mots de tous les jours Et ça me fait quelque chose Il est entré dans mon cœur Une part de bonheur Dont je connais la cause Voici lui pour moi Moi pour lui dans la vie Il me l'a dit La jurée sur sa vie Everybody, la 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 It's better on this side. La 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 la. Sans en moi, mon cœur qui mon cœur qui veut la vie en rose. Je vois la vie en rose. Je vois la vie en rose. Je vois la vie en <rire> je vois la vie en rose, je vois la vie en rose, la vie en Thank you, merci. Thank you, thank you so much, Stacy. It's beautiful. I see some of you are, are dreaming. In pink tonight. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Je vous en prie. Uh, so it's uh, it's great to celebrate gender equality on that song. Uh, please. Now, now it's the moment that we're all waiting for. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we're gonna have a glimpse of the finalists for this year's Women in Business Awards. The finalists were selected on the basis of three criteria: innovation, leadership, and impact in their communities. I invite you to applaud after you have read out the whole list in alphabetical order. Rosana Marquez from Brazil. Rocio Castro Fernandez, Ecuador. Endei Fatou Nye, de Gambia. Chandra Vadana, India. Lama Sha Abu Dahab, Jordan. Uneisa Ali Isufo, Mozambique. Barbara Ofuono, Buyondo, Uganda. Ana de Leon, Uruguay. Rina Rey Mogollón, Venezuela. Lia Diana Mitaba, Zambia. An applause, please, for all of them. And I am delighted to welcome Rosana.
Chandra, Lama, Anunaysa, and Barbara, who are at the event this evening. Please join me. Please. your seats oh. <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah please You're n before we get to the part of the awards we have a surprise for all of you because we always like to improve different things and this year here in Emprotec they have a beautiful idea to involve youth so we wanted to inspire youth also to achieve gender equality through entrepreneurship. So we invited them to share their voices and ideas through the Student Ideas Challenge, preparing collaboration with Flow in Action and supported by Symbiotics and the City of Geneva as a continuation of the Vision Youth Entrepreneurship Project with Africa 21. You will have seen the contributions in posters display outside of the hall. Now you will hear some sort of talks from them, prepared to be moved and motivated by their hopes and their dreams. First, let me invite Magda El Sadek up to the stage, who will introduce herself and her concept. Please, Magda. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Magda. And the story I'm about to tell you, which is my story, started about 28 years ago in Egypt, where life was great in my little bubble. A golden bubble contrasting with the global reality of a country that I didn't really know much about, actually. 10 years later, I moved to my mother's land, Switzerland. There, I found a certain freedom it was the first time I could ride a bike in the streets, all alone. Or that I discovered the pleasure of drinking fresh water from the tap. Or also, the pleasure of just picking a carrot from my granddad's garden and eating it right there. It was also the first time I was called Arab, which rather than reinforcing a feeling of belonging, and unicity to be proud of made me feel rejection. A few years later, as I was stepping into adulthood, I became, and I was, a woman living in Europe with an Arabic background, facing a world of differences and working to break out of other people's rules about my place in society. In my effort to come to a new consciousness of who I am, I started researching my father's land, Egypt, where I found a lot of great actions, a lot of great stories, which inspired the idea of the business I'm creating today called Enyama. Enyama is basically my effort to identify all the change catalysts around Egypt, who are through their bigger, smaller actions creating change towards the sustainable development goals. It's like finding all the little dots over the country, bringing them together and showing collective impact, which I hope will encourage individuals to act on the opportunities they see to make a difference. My aim is also to support and encourage those change catalysts, which might be through connecting them to global expertise to amplify local resources and ideas. Through El Nyama, I'm hoping to create a deeper consciousness in individuals about the interconnectedness of their own actions with their social and natural environment. 
Through Nyama, I'm trying to find my place in the world, happily defining myself as a Swiss Egyptian woman, starting a business and feeling empowered by that. So wish me luck, because in four days, I'm leaving the comfort I found here, or the freedom I found here, to find even more freedom in Egypt. I'm going to try to find ways to make space for achieving sustainable development goals, specifically through showing how ethical and sustainable development can be done at a local level. In this spirit of collaboration and community celebrating diversity, I invite you to follow my adventures and maybe become part of it as well through social media, a website coming soon. I'll be posting videos about all those beautiful findings. Thank you very much. Merci. Shukran. Thank you, Marta. I think she deserves another round of applause. Come on. And now it's the turn of Nerine, Kelly, and Matt, who are students from the International School of Geneva at Colleen, to share their idea. Please come to the stage. An applause. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for welcoming us. Um, every day, we walk into our school's cafeteria, extremely alarmed by immense quantities of perfectly edible food simply dumped into the waste. This is all a result of our ignorance and poor management. Recognizing that this embodies a worldwide issue, notably relating to Sustainable Development Goal 2, addressing zero hunger, and Sustainable Development Goal 12, which is all about responsible consumption and production, we began to wonder how youth can become key players in tackling global development issues. Equally inspired by taking climate action and enhancing the wealth and well-being of individuals, we examined the possibilities of connecting solutions together and undertaking an integrated approach in solving the problems of food waste, unsustainable consumption, and our lack of balanced diets as a consequence of insufficient knowledge on nutrition, or in other cases, simply due to inaccessibility. So our solution to this issue is through Gecko, which is a sustainable catering company, which combines education and the local production of food in order to tackle sustainable development goal number two. So for example, if the concept was applied to a school, uh, specialists would come in to educate students on the power of the consumer and food wastage. Along with this, food would be locally grown at the school premises with the help of the students. And when, if this isn't a possibility, uh, the food would be locally sourced, which would all reduce the carbon footprint. So gecko services could also be applied in retirement homes or prisons, so it would reduce food wastage while simultaneously educate people on this issue and hopefully help them make the right decisions in the future. So in the long term, Gecko could bridge the global gap between the economic status of a country and how much food is wasted. As youth, we feel a responsibility for turning ideas like Gecko into action. It is our generation that will one day inherit the world, as well as all of its problems. The entire planet is a shared resource, therefore, so is food. This means that we all have a responsibility for coming up with solutions and applying these solutions in the real world. Gecko is a solution that seems viable and possible in the environment that we are a part of every day. But similar concepts can be amplified and applied to a national or even a global scale. Nurturing innovative ideas like Gecko and taking a collaborative, creative approach would not only allow us to reach SDG number two, but other SDGs too. We believe that if you are inspired by an issue, you can push for positive change. Anything is possible in the next 12 years leading up to 2030. And in this world that suffers from so many issues, 
all of which will only intensify if nothing is done, innovation and action is imperative, not only by us as youth, but by every single individual, starting with those in this room today. Therefore, we invite you to join us in taking action. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aren't we inspired by all these youth? I think we all are. Another applause for them, please. And now I would like to give the floor to Marta Balaña, Vicente from Mint Mays. My name is Marta Balaña Vicente, and I work as business management associate at MyMaze, a pioneer neurotechnology organization and Switzerland's first unicorn. Yes, I am part of a group of women who make it to management positions, and by doing so, help reducing the gender gap in executive roles. Nevertheless, if we would have met 10 years ago, when I was, was much younger than now, I would have started this speech very differently by saying, Good evening, my name is Marta Balaña Vicente, and I am an architect and a social entrepreneur. My story over the past decade is a clear example of the power of entrepreneurship as a tool for women professional growth in today's business world. This is why I'm here tonight, to share my experience with all of you. September 2008, I was contacted to organize 10 architectural workshops for primary schools in Barcelona, where I come from. With virtually no budget, my first challenge was to build a team to run the activities. I quickly resolved this problem by engaging some motivated college students. If we could validate this activity for university credits, they told me, many other students would volunteer. Duh, I thought. Staff problem next year, solved. I negotiated a deal for credit validation with the School of Architecture and the year after, I could recruit enough volunteers to double my workshop offer. We really like the idea that children meet college students and real architects, a school director said. That helps them imagine their own future. It motivates them to study. Let's build a full academic orientation program, I thought. It will cover different professional disciplines, architecture, science, engineering, journalism, medicine, law, Without any marketing nor, strat nor strategy background, I had just discovered the scalability engine of my project. I engaged journalism and engineering universities, and the year after, I started to deploy those workshops too. The businesswoman who's talking to you now was born then. 2011 and 12 were tough years for the Spanish economy. Not a good time to grow businesses, even more difficult to do it in the social sector and almost a miracle if relying on shrinking public school budgets. Nevertheless, I did not give up. Entrepreneurs are resilient creatures who turn challenges into opportunities. I targeted corporate social responsibility sponsors, managed to expand into some private schools, won a national award, and we survived. By 2013, 35 schools, five universities, around 500 college students, and over 24,000 children had participated in the program. Ironically, my startup had guided thousands of kids in the discovery of their future while enabling me to unfold my true professional passion, business management. In 2014, I decided to further develop my natural entrepreneurial skills and I applied to IMD MBAs. I handed over my startup and a year after graduation, I joined MyMaze. My current role, in my current role, I have worked in strategy definition, business modeling, organizational design, and not by accident, I have implemented the company's continuous learning program. As you see, my story is an example of the power of entrepreneurship as a tool for women's professional growth in today's business world. It is therefore my honor to be here tonight and support and protect awards in their key role to promote successful entrepreneurs. My very heartfelt congratulations to tonight's finalists and, of course, the rest of brave businesswomen in the room. Thank you. Oh.
Another round of applause. Bravo. <laughs> and finally, we have the son and daughter of our woman entrepreneur finalist, Lamasha, will present the robotics concept. So I would love to welcome Nathier and Salma. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nadir Abu Dhab, and my project is Project Hope. The story starts four years ago, when I, uh, when me and my friends were uh, were participating in First Lego League, a, ro a local robotics competition. And uh, what we had to do was we had to come up with a solution related to education. What we thought of was to make a solution which enabled disabled people to access education. We specifically targeted partially disabled people or amputee patients who couldn't use their arms. And what we decided was the best way to get them into education was through the usage of a computer. So we started with a small $20 uh, uh, piece of hardware that could only move the mouse in one direction. It had some major restrictions. A few years later, I participated in the World Science Forum and I improved on the project. What I did was I used a program I made in Python in order to find a person's face. And what it would do is it would also map the mouse to the person's face. And so you can simply move a mouse on a computer with your face. The project still had some restrictions. You couldn't click. And clicking is pretty important to using a computer. So I, de uh, so I decided to improve on it even more. And what, what the program can do now is it can find your eyes. And if you close or cover one eye, it would lock the cursor in place. And when you blinked for half a second, it would click. And now you have full functionality of a computer simply by using your face. It's a completely hands-free way to use your computer. This means that we can get many more people into education. There are hundreds of thousands of people worldwide that, uh, that don't have uh, the ability to use their hands. Imagine if these people could learn. Imagine if these people could make ideas. All of these goals that we're talking about would become, would, would become easier to, uh, to achieve if these hundreds of thousands of people actually had access to education and could communicate with other people. Now, of course, my program at the moment isn't perfect and it has to be improved. I have to somehow be able to, uh, to enable it, to, uh, to enable my program to be as easy to use as just normally using a computer, using your hands. Now, doing that will require many improvements, some of them subtle, some of them obvious. Some of the more subtle ones are being able to detect faces from multiple angles. Some of the more obvious ones is being able to type without using the on-screen keyboard. Now I need. Uh, now I can't all do all of this alone, and I need many of your. Uh, I need your help. My name is Nadir Abu Dhab, and this is Project Hope. Thank you. You're welcome. Bravo. Wonderful. Yeah. Your sister is coming. Yeah. And now we're gonna hear from Salma. Salma, please come to the stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Salma Abd Dahab, and I'm 12 years old. I'm a seventh grader at King's Academy, which is located in Madaba, Jordan. I am a student at IRA, International Robotics Academy. It's an honor to be here and present on behalf of King's Academy and IRA, International Robotics Academy. My idea presents in the category Sustainable Cities and Communities. But before I go into depth about my project, I want to ask you all a question, and I want you to think about it. Is it common to have athletic machines or objects that help you perform a certain sport to generate electricity? For example, a trampoline, a treadmill, etc. 
My answer is, it can be common. With my idea, I can make that common. My idea is called the piezoelectric trampoline. The term piezoelectric comes from a Greek word, piezo, which means to apply pressure onto a certain surface. This is how my idea works. When you apply pressure onto the piezoelectric plates, the electric current flows to another circuit which stores the electricity. And then when the light switch is turned on, the LED light will turn on. In the future, I would like to evolve on this project even more by building this project on a larger scale and maybe use more piezoelectric plates in order for the LED light to stay on for a longer period of time. From today, we all strive to keep our communities and cities sustainable and healthy from being more, uh, from being more active and athletic. We all go green. We are the future, so it's our job to keep our future bright. I'm Salma Abu Dhab, and this is my project to keep our world sustainable. Thank you for listening. <laughs> You're amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. After this, I can barely speak. I'm speechless. <laughs> So much talent. I think we all met today the new generation of innovators and entrepreneurs. And I would like to just ask you for a very, very huge applause for all of them. So before we start with the, 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 the first awards, I would like to welcome Jonathan Ortmans on stage. Please. So, Jona so Jonathan is the president of the Global Entrepreneurship Network, and we are thrilled to celebrate the launch of the, the campaign in Switzerland tonight. So please. You, you, like, you want the mic? Just turn it on. Turn it on. Yeah, on. I'm Jonathan Altman, president and founder of the Global Entrepreneurship Network. What we're about is creating an opportunity for anybody, anywhere, to unleash their idea. We want to make sure that the guy that's got the worst deal on the planet has an opportunity. At the Global Entrepreneurship Network, we've built one global entrepreneurship ecosystem that allows anyone on the planet to be able to connect, understand, support, and celebrate the entrepreneurs that represent so much promise for our future. We went in with the belief that we could create a common culture across the globe in the interest of entrepreneurship and innovation. We learned a lot of techniques and tools about ultimately, how do you build a community that's across the world? How do you cross national boundaries and cultures and religions and languages? we discovered something that was common in all people. They have this enthusiasm and curiosity about making the world a better place. We tried to provide some structure, but allow a lot of flowers to be blooming the way they wanted to. We have divided our work into four primary cornerstones. We want to be able to connect everybody across any aspects of an entrepreneurial ecosystem to find peers, find markets, and find opportunities. Secondly, we want to understand the field better. We want to elevate the field based on research and data. And then thirdly, we're working carefully to provide the best support programs we can find. The last part is we like to celebrate. It's, it's where we began with Global Entrepreneurship Week, which is the notion of making the role of the entrepreneur be perceived around the world as being a force for good, as being the individuals who are able to create new value in our societies and can really set an example for all of our citizens in the way we go about living our lives. Entrepreneurs are the great equalizers. They bring the ability of anybody to be able to have the opportunity no matter where they come from in the world. That promise of entrepreneurship is always what's empowered our community.
Is this on now? Great. I am, Fiorina, you didn't tell me when you invited me to come uh, that I would be following such amazing acts. I'm really glad I had a pretty video to give me some confidence to stand up on this stage. Um, my gosh, um, is this humbling uh, to hear all of uh, these young voices, uh, these extraordinary, courageous uh, women. Uh, it, is, it is just um, moving and touching, and I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Farina, and especially Secretary General. Thank you so much for your leadership. I know that at Gen we watch with uh, awe all the work you're doing and try to do everything we can to complement uh, this, uh, uh, this enormously successful effort. So thank you so much indeed. Um, I just want to tell you, you know, um, so, so uh, you know, I have a 12-year-old daughter, so I hope you don't mind. I took a little video because I want to take it back and inspire her. Uh, uh, and, and Magda, um, I'm going to be a foreigner in Cairo. I'm proud to tell you that um, I'm going to come to Cairo in a couple of weeks' time. We have chosen Cairo for our second-gen startup campus that we'll be breaking ground to do in New Cairo. And um, um, so uh, I, I may call you up and say I'm a foreigner, and I, 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 I'm sorry, I feel like a Westerner in another place, so maybe you can teach us how to get home quickly. But to all of you, congratulations. Um, I, I, I really want to acknowledge the power of what um, these examples really teach us. Uh, it's what inspires our work at Gen, both in having a global Entrepreneurship Week campaign, which is about to kick off. And as was mentioned, we're about to have a phenomenal GEW here in Geneva and throughout Switzerland, and we're very proud of that. But we'll be actually having, during Global Entrepreneurship Week, through no work of ours, uh, through the power and the passion of what it means to have a grassroots movement inspired by these entrepreneurs, there will be more than 10,000 events happening in 170 countries all in one week. And that tells you that there's an enormously powerful force of people ready to try to change the world through the power of entrepreneurship. But what I think is most important for us to recognize is that, as I have said previously, entrepreneurship is now not just something of narrow commercial significance. It's something that represents the possibility of human endeavor for the benefit of all of us. Um, and most importantly, we're now entering, we believe, a whole new era for our field, an era where we're now in an environment where we will see what is often referred to as the true rise of the rest. You know, I first spoke, uh, and I will tell you, I was the only male speaker of 500 people in the room. I spoke at my first Women's Entrepreneurship Conference in um, 2004, and we were in Istanbul. And I remember at the time, you know, there was a lot of discussion about the fact that we were talking about women's entrepreneurship. We were talking about groups that were not included in the entrepreneurial ecosystems. We were talking about them like this was something that we should do for a social reason because we felt that it was something that it was important and powerful for people to be involved. We were not talking about it the way we're talking about it now which as an economist I'm telling you that there is absolutely no way we're going to succeed at this unless we have an inclusive entrepreneurial ecosystem that has an equal opportunity for everybody, no matter where you're from, no matter whether you're a man or a woman or what your religion or your creed or your color is, no matter whether you come from some privileged background or you come from, from, from very poor backgrounds, every single person is a gem, is a talent, and even just from an economic perspective, it doesn't work unless everybody's included. And this is something which is enormously exciting to us now because it is mainstream recognized that this is the priority. One of the organizations we work carefully with is called the Kaufman Foundation. It's an American philanthropy, like all of them, created by the wealth of an entrepreneur. And um, one of the things that the Kaufman Foundation has said is its underlying principles for all of its work now is zero barriers, zero barriers for women, zero barriers for people who don't have the same opportunities who have not had them. And they're not just saying that because that's the right thing to do for society. They're saying it because it's the right thing to do if you want to enable and empower entrepreneurship as a driver, yes, of economic growth, 
yes, of jobs, but I think most importantly for me, as a driver of individualism, is our ability to have confidence in ourselves to do what some of these young men and women are doing, which is standing on this stage and saying, I don't care if you told me that I was an Arab and I came from uh, when I arrived in, in Switzerland and that somehow I wasn't supposed to belong here. I do belong here and I am now a young woman as Magda gave as your example, but you all gave great examples of courage. So I think this is um, an, an incredibly exciting time for all of us, men and women, uh, people from all nations of the world to be uh, focusing on this endeavor of how do we make it possible for anyone anywhere to be able to start and scale a firm. It's what we do at Gen. It's what we wake up every morning trying to think about. We do this through coming up with better policy suggestions for governments. We can't do it by coming up with more robust data and research so that we're not wasting our resources or our time on things that don't have an impact. And we do this by unveiling programs that don't just get invented in the United States, but programs that get invented on every part of the world. We're very keen to see that we have the rise of interventions and ideas to help entrepreneurs that come from every part of the planet, not just from those cities and communities that have been famously known for being experts in this field. And so it is with a great deal of optimism that I join you this evening, and I thank you for having me. Uh, I am warmed and inspired by this, and I want to congratulate all the women entrepreneurs and also UNCTAD. And I want to tell you that I think you should be optimistic too, because it's, if the entrepreneurs are not optimistic when the world is facing big challenge, who is going to be? Uh, and I think you should be optimistic that at a time of, for example, rising nationalism, that you too here, as evidenced today by the Emprotec uh, organizers, being a community unto themselves, no matter what part of the world they come from, there is a trust, there's a confidence in each other, and I think that's one of the things that things like sport, uh, but I think in my world, most importantly, entrepreneurship can do. It can help us to sustain long-term our ability to be able to tackle these problems together as a global community, uh, the very spirit of what the United Nations was formed for, and to be able to do this in a fashion that can override momentary, shall I say, fashionable trends in different directions by different nations and different governments. So um, I'm betting on all of you, and I'm very much hoping that we at GEN can be uh, helpful. Uh, I'm humbled by the great work that everyone's doing, and I hope that anybody who's interested in anything we can do to help, I hope that you will ask. We hope that you will all know that you're all welcome to our annual gathering in April every year. It won't cost you anything. If you came to this, you can come. We have tickets, uh, which happens this year, as you know, in the Kingdom of Bahrain in, in the middle of April. If you're interested in meeting other people from other parts of the entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, Fiorina and, and others will be able to attest to, to, uh, to what happens there. But we hope to see you soon or to stay in touch. And I want to thank you very much and thank especially all of our entrepreneurs for doing what you do best, which is leading and letting us know that our job is just to follow and help you. And we wish you the very much uh, best of luck in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. As you know, the theme of this year's World Investment Forum is investment in sustainable development. So aside from the 10 finalists, two special recognition awards are being made for the, positive, posit for the positive social and environmental impact that their enterprises have. Now it is time to announce the winners of those special recognition awards. And I would like for that to invite Mr. Alok Kumar, founder of SRK Consulting Group, to deliver the special recognition social award and and Stacy will help us because she will give us a musical hint and we'll try to discover who's the winner prefer this one yeah. yeah okay please come here please come here yeah. good evening everyone so first of all, I congratulate all of you who are here uh, for the wonderful feat. And the two young children who were here, I could make out that 
Your mother is also sitting here. Because if not for tears, it would have been difficult. But the tears told very clearly that she is the mother. And that's what women is all about. Emotions. So when you talk about women entrepreneurship, I'm very, very, very happy to be here participating and uh, conveying the best wishes uh, to the women of the world. Your inspiration to everyone, not only the women, but also the men. Because <clears throat> I come from a country where women entrepreneurs are not too many. And I feel that this inspiration travels worldwide, everywhere. So, I'll... Yeah, the envelope. Okay. Oh, so, sorry. So uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. I have to stop <laughs> because Stacy has to give us... Stacy, please, if you can give us a musical hint. Oh, yeah. We'll try to... <laughs> All right. Show me the way they dance. Do you know how to sing this one? <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, a big applause! Thank you very much. So it's a great honor to be involved to deliver the special recognition social award to Chandra Radhakrishnan. Yes, please. Yeah. So I think, and as I told that, India doesn't have Thank too you. many women entrepreneurs. And I'm in business of nurturing entrepreneurs. So I thought it would be a good way to give my compliments to her by sponsoring her uh, trip to my uh, office and also giving her a training and uh, nurturing to make sure that she's successful in whatever she's doing. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, congratulations, Chandra. You're doing an amazing job. Felicitations. And now, I would like to invite Ms. Giselle Ruffer, founder of the Lands Water Switzerland, to deliver the Special Recognition Export Potential Award. You can have now a musical hint on who is going to be the winner of this award. Você, você me mata Ai, se te pego Ai, ai, se te pego Pensa, pensa Assim você me mata Ai, se te pego Ai, ai, se te pego dance all the night. I am already tired. <laughs> uh, I am very happy. Mesdames, ladies, you are all beautiful. You are so unique. Each one is so different. But we have the same heart, the same courage, the same will to win and to realize our dream. I am very happy. It is now? Yes, please. <laughs> What a beautiful name. I am very happy to ask Rosanna Marquez. She is the export champion. She received the export champion award. 
but also a Delance watch that I am, I have done especially for you. I want you. Can you take this? I can. I can. <laughs> I just want to see if you. Oh. <laughs> I will explain you the meaning later <laughs> because it is too long. Okay, you have all that here. I let you find the <laughs> way. Thank you. Can you remove it? <laughs> Perhaps we have. <laughs> Congratulations, Rosanna. Another round of applause for her. Now it's time to discover who are the winners of this year Bronze, Silver, and Gold and Protect Women in Business Awards? We'll start first with the third place, then the second, and finally, our overall winner of the award. I would like to invite Professor Michelle Coletti, Associate Professor of the Department of Management and Technology of Grenoble Ecole Management, to present the Bronze Award. You can have now a musical hint of who is the winner of this award. Bonjour, mon préféré. Thank you. The, the heat was not so, not so easy, at least for me to understand. Anyway, I'm very, very happy to be here. I have to say that this is my first time in Empretec, even though it's a couple of uh, years that uh, I work uh, uh, with uh, Fulvia and the uh, team, uh, I collaborate with them in, um, with uh, our students uh, at Grenoble Code Management, because I think it's very important that uh, even MBA students that uh, until a few years ago was, were just about uh, profit and growth and career, they have an understanding of the importance of other uh, values and here these values are expressed at the maximum level. We heard fantastic stories, they have been uh, commented and uh, I'm really honored to be here to deliver the Bronze Woman in Business Award. And, <laughs> and the winner is... I, yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I thought, I thought a bit of suspense. Okay, the drums. <laughs> Barbara of Uono Buyondo. Maybe I can 
It does it? Okay. Maybe I can tell what it's about. Uh, the award, the prize in this case is uh, me with uh, my students. Uh, uh, next year, uh, between February and April, we, we work uh, with you to help you to develop further uh, your, uh, your activity, your project. And so hopefully we'll be in touch quite a lot uh, to see how we can uh, give you some sort of support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations, Barbara. I would like now to invite Mrs. Vanina Farber from uh, Chair Social Innovation, IMD Business School, Lausanne, to present the Civil Award. Please, Stacey. Whatever you prefer. <laughs> Comme si je n'existais pas Elle est passée à côté de moi Mais sans un regard le savant J'ai dit Aïcha, prends tout est pour toi oh, Aïcha, Aïcha, écoute-moi Aïcha, Aïcha, t'en va pas non Aïcha Aïcha, écoute-moi Aïcha, Aïcha, t'en va pas I'm very proud to represent here IMD. At IMD, we believe in the power of business schools transforming lives and also generating real impact. And we're very proud to become a partner in the amazing journey that you have started. And not only a partner, but really we believe in what you will bring to us and to IMD community too. Part of our values are pioneering, are uh, being open, and that's what you have done in sectors that are usually very difficult for women and countries that are difficult for women. So we'll be very proud to give you a fellowship to be part of the leadership, a digital leadership program, along with uh, accommodation, and to be considered and have you as part of our community. So. The winner of the Silver Award is, now I want suspense too, <laughs> Lama Shasha A. Abu Dhabi. Woo! And so you see that amazing children have an amazing example. So congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Lama. Please. Now is the time that we've been waiting for to discover who is the winner of this year Empretech Women in Business Award. And I would like to invite Mrs. Francesca Lavazza, Lavazza Group member on behalf of the Lavazza Foundation, and Dr. Kituji back on the stage to present the award. You can have now a musical hint on who is the winner. Thank you so much. It's, a, it's an honor for me to be here on this stage 
together with these incredible women, inspiring, brave, and wonderful tonight. I warmly congratulate all of the finalists here and commend them for their hard work and determination. They serve an inspiration for every woman everywhere. But it's a great honor to be involved and deliver this Gold Women in Business Award to And the winner is Unesha Ali Sufu. Obrigado. Congratulations, congratulations so much. It's with great pleasure that I present you with a gift from Lavazza Foundation, a study tour in Brazil to explore new methods in green construction. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Grazie. So congratulations, Inés. I would like to just give a round of applause to all our winners tonight. And please stand up. to thank okay. all these beautiful ladies who invite me today. Miss Fiorina, thank you so much. Natalia, thank you everybody for the introduction. On guitar, Mr. Musa Guada. On keyboard, Mr. Patrice Garnero. And you know what? This is the end. Hold your breath and count to ten. Feel the earth moving to Hear my heart burst again For this is the end I've done and done this moment So overthrew I hold them Swept away and stolen. Everybody, let the sky fall when it crumbles. We will stand tall and face it up together. Let the sky fall when it crumbles. Oh, we will stand tall. Out sky and fall Giselle, thank you so much Stand tall and face it all together. Let 
let the sky fall oh, When it crumbles oh, We will stand tall That sky fall Thank you very much. Thank you, Stacy. Please, the mic. Thank you very much, Stacy. You, you can sit down. We have some closing remarks from the sponsors. So, please, uh, we have from uh, Symbiotics and Dell. Please, Anya Berezhnia from Symbiotics for some closing remarks. Thank you and good evening to everyone. It's, uh, I guess it's a bit difficult to, to do closing remarks after, <laughs> after such emotional song. So uh, I'm really glad and I guess Symbiotic is really pleased to support this event and contribute at least a little bit to, to the success of, uh, of the event and all my congratulations to the uh, to the entrepreneurs we have here, to the finalists, to uh, to the ladies we we have um, in in this hall, and uh, from our side, it's always inspiring to see success stories from uh, entrepreneurs achieving their goals, as we also do contribute. At least we believe that we do contribute to to the sustainable de development and we do invest into sustainable development and that's why it's great to see the achievements and the results of our work as well and especially their work. So thank you very much and uh, again we are really really happy to facilitate and uh, to help. Yeah. Thank you very much Anya. Please Mrs. Anya Moron from Dell EMC. <laughs> it seems to be two Anyas following each other. Um, oh, so on behalf of Dell Technologies, I also want to congratulate you on being the finalist and not least for being such great role models for female entrepreneurs and females um, all around the world. So congratulations and thank you for your leadership on, on that. We know that access to technology, capital, you know, networks, uh, knowledge is, for female entrepreneurs is so difficult, but you have overcome that. So you should be so proud of yourself. Um, in Dell, uh, Dell, is, Dell Technologies is a uh, founder led company. Michael Dell created the company many, many years ago in 84. Uh, so he's very passionate about entrepreneurship and about diversity and inclusion. And our focus on female entrepreneurship combines those two passions of Michael's. So we created in 2010 what we called DWEN, Dell Women Entrepreneur Network. And since then, every year, we do a conference somewhere around the world where we bring together female entrepreneurs and try and help them as much as we can in our humble way of access to technology, uh, combine them with VCs, give them network, and over the years, we've created a big network of female entrepreneurs. This year, it's going to be in Singapore, so we hope to see the female entrepreneurs in the room uh, at the event, and we will continue the journey together with you. And we are very, very proud sponsor of this event and look forward to be partnering here for the next many years. Thank you, and I think it's time for celebration night, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's our turn now to conclude officially the ceremony. A uh, big thank to Secretary General for allowing this. Thank you for your team. Uh, thank you for the, for the winners. Uh, congratulations, the sponsors. Stacy King, thank you very much for accompanying us tonight. And also the young people that have been, who have been very inspiring tonight. And thank you all for being here and uh, hope to see you uh, very soon. Thank you very much. I would like to...
to remind you that you all have been witness of what happens tonight and how, what is the power of entrepreneurship. So we would love you to spread the word about what Improtech is doing and it's globally important for empowering women and achievement gender equality. So you all are part of us. This is a big family and we are so happy that you celebrate with us the success of these wonderful and inspiring women. Thank you so much.